David J. Chalmers, The Conscious Mind in Search of a Fundamental Theory. What's it like to be you right now? As you listen to these words, complex neurological processes are happening in your brain. Sound waves hit your eardrums, stimulating hair cells that send electrical signals down sensory neurons flowing into your auditory cortex. Then a cascade of neuronal firing takes place. But there's something else happening too. You're having a subjective experience. There's something it feels like from the inside to listen, understand the language, and think about what you're hearing. The keys to this mystery reside deep in the human consciousness. Most of the natural sciences like biology and physics have made remarkable progress in explaining the outer world. For centuries, though, consciousness, your personal felt experience, has remained largely unexplained. Today, with advanced tools peering into the brain, many hope that the fundamental workings of consciousness would be understood through neuroscience. Yet the philosopher David Chalmers caused a stir in the 1990s by arguing neuroscience faced a major roadblock that he dubbed the hard problem of consciousness. He claimed understanding neurons and synapses won't solve the mystery. Somewhere sensations, feelings and experiences, what it's like to exist, must arise from the physical body in ways not yet imaginable. The work became a rallying cry promoting the theory that the problem of explaining subjective experience laid bare the fundamental gaps in the understanding of reality itself. What makes explaining consciousness so uniquely challenging? Why has it stubbornly resisted attempts to reduce it down or pinpoint its causes? In this blink to David J. Chalmers' The Conscious Mind, you'll discover why his insights about subjective phenomena remain pivotal today, for pushing science and philosophy to think much bigger in understanding the mystery of consciousness. An easy and a hard problem. To understand the problems that science faces in explaining the experience of consciousness, it's important to understand the difference between easy and hard problems that must be solved. On the one hand, functions relating to cognition and behavior have clear neural links. Neuroscientists make progress daily in connecting memory formation in the hippocampus or decision signals in prefrontal cortex networks to their psychological purposes. Studying how the brain enables perceptions, thoughts, actions and skills is what the author grouped as the easy problems. Not much doubt remains about these processes in cognitive neuroscience. But most accept that physical systems somehow support mental functions, so further research will keep connecting those dots. But these discoveries leave a lot of mystery around conscious experience itself. For instance, why the redness of red, the bitterness of sourness, the feelings of what anger or joy are like. Unlike functions, these raw sensations have an accompanying aspect called phenomenal consciousness. And here lies the hard nut to crack. On top of all cognitive behavioral abilities made possible by the brain lies the more mysterious emergence of the subjective inner life. Chalmers argued that no amount of solving easy problems can explain why or how conscious experiences arise at all. Most organisms on Earth, after all, likely process information by reacting to their environments without feeling anything inside. Imagine swarms of silicon artificial intelligence bots faithfully mimicking people but with no consciousness. They lack this phenomenal consciousness, the rich world of felt sensations that makes life worth living. The mystery is why hunks of biological matter produce inner worlds full of images, sounds and scents which live in technicolor, phenomenology or experience of being. Our brains somehow enable this, yet the qualities themselves float free, somewhere outside of information processing. By comparison, understanding everything about how TVs work, from electrodes firing pixels to circuit boards computing signals to speakers popping, doesn't directly explain what it's like to experience watching a movie. The hardware supports the content, but remains silent on where the vivid scenes come from. Similarly, no list of neural connections that correlate to perception or decision-making can reveal what it feels like to see red, concentrate on a book, or hurt from a breakup. 
Science might be able to map processes supporting consciousness, but it dodges the heart of the issue. Why activity produces such eruptions of feelings and experiences at all? In philosophical terms, there appears to be an explanatory gap between physical systems described by science and the phenomenal properties we experience as a result. The story of objective functions around vision misses the main character, the subjective sight with all its technicolor glory that we experience. Easy explanations leave the hard problem a total mystery. For decades, science has struggled to fit sentience into a cold mechanical universe, but we've achieved no satisfactory answer as to why or how our brains manufacture soul-like conscious minds. So the hard problem stands as a gauntlet thrown, the last bastion for materialist science to conquer. The Limits of Theory Given the enormous gap between what neuroscience knows and what it can explain about consciousness, it's tempting to view it as a scientific failure. But that's not the whole truth. Chalmers argues that widespread theories of mind also fail to account for the emergence of conscious awareness. Understanding his critiques sets the stage for his bold alternative theory, integrating consciousness more deeply into reality. Chalmers carefully analyzed dominant philosophical views like materialism, which holds that reality stems wholly from particles, forces, mass, and energy. He found even sophisticated versions were unable to bridge the understanding gap between neurons firing signals in the brain to the technicolor sensations that result. Theories based on physical matter couldn't crack the mystery as to why objective arrangements produce a subjective inner life. For instance, behaviorism, which avoids engaging inner experience altogether, claims psychology need only study stimuli and behavioral responses. But this seems unsatisfying. Who among us doubts we consciously perceive and feel? Even more progressive theories struggle, like functionalism, that argues that the mind isn't a specific tissue, but computational patterns. Chalmers grants that information processing in the brain supports consciousness, but asks, why would organizing abstract signals feel like anything at all to the system performing them? We assume feeling emerges because we already live subjectively, but in themselves, no functions logically necessitate this qualitative experience. The point is driven home by a thought experiment of imagining philosophical zombies, or artificial intelligences, mimicking all our behavior yet having no conscious experience inside. The notion of perfectly capable zombie AI lacking phenomenal consciousness proves that no amount of cognitive function automatically brings about subjective inner sight and sensations the way our brains do. Integrated biological views meet similar explanatory roadblocks, Perfect knowledge of vision's mechanisms in our optic cortex can't explain the emergence of sight, nor do quantum effects in microtubules explain why microscopic events feel like anything. We always rediscover the central enigma, brute matter in motion underpins, yet cannot account for the origins of consciousness. This is the hard situation in which materialism finds itself. To admit that no exclusive focus on arrangements of objective properties, be they behavior, computation, or neural wiring diagrams, ever adds up to or intrinsically demonstrates subjective experience itself. Of course, consciousness depends on physical processing, but remains irreducibly more, a further fact it exists for subjects of perception. But then how did feeling get into the universe, if not included fundamentally in our theories? A different approach. With so many questions left unanswered by materialism, Chalmers's answer is a startling one, framing consciousness as fundamental in itself. In other words, a basic property woven into the fabric of reality. His double aspect theory breaks down information as having both physical and phenomenal properties that provide structure to the world. Most previous theories treat information as purely abstract patterns devoid of subjective qualities, but this new approach sees information intrinsically imbued with a deeper layer of meaning in what it feels like experientially. Rather than emergence, experience manifests directly, having both physical and phenomenal aspects combined. 
Consider the words you're listening to right now in this blink. They're objective sound waves transmitting symbols in the form of language, as well as the phenomenal properties of what it's like hearing my voice from inside. In other words, information intrinsically has dual faces. What we normally call the physical realm maps the objective and structural side of information, while consciousness actively makes up the rest. Experience doesn't pop out of physical processing as something alien and extra. Instead, qualities reside implicitly in information itself, embodied whenever sufficiently complex organisms make it. Taken this way, experience ceases being a freak occurrence without cause or place in the external world. Instead, consciousness actually makes the inner experience of information. Our brains don't miraculously generate feelings, but rather access and reveal intrinsic experiences embedded in reality beyond physical matter. Truly, seeing reality means acknowledging information has intrinsic meaning from inside too. Physical theories tell only half the story. To complete our worldview requires including consciousness altogether more deeply. This theory has radical implications. Most notably, panpsychism, the view that mind exists without exception down to fundamental levels of nature. Chalmers defends this theory by arguing that if consciousness forms an elemental property, it should be universal, not the realm of the human brain alone. Of course, that doesn't mean electrons or protons have rich inner worlds, only that the simplest entailment of experience as fundamental is that it exists in some minuscule way everywhere, not only in biological brains. Panpsychism becomes the unexpected pathway toward integrating consciousness pervasively into our fundamental experience of being. This double-aspect framework, combining the material with the immaterial in consciousness, remains a pivotal influence in science and philosophy, urging both to go beyond fading paradigms that either avoid or minimize consciousness to physical explanations. The hard problem stubbornly withstands purely functional analysis or reductionistic elimination. Instead, we must question materialism's adequacy for illuminating experiential reality. The hard problem demands nothing less than rethinking consciousness as fundamental. A universe of consciousness. If consciousness isn't some random mental spark in the brain alone, the pivotal question becomes much more startling. Is consciousness a more universal experience? And if it is, how deeply does it go? In other words, if qualities aren't intrinsically designed into the machinery of reality right down to the ground floor, how else could biological mechanisms ever generate subjective sight and sound from mere transmissions of physical information in neural impulses? Sight can't magically arise in brains obeying materialist laws from insentient particles. Chalmers carefully builds a case that to solve the hard problem, we must rethink consciousness as fundamental. His double-aspect framework argues that information has two inseparable sides, an objective side described by physics that structures reality mechanistically and a subjective side constituting how that information feels experienced from the within. For conscious creatures like us, that translates to conscious sights, sounds and sensations manifesting via signals received and processed. But does experience only exist in rare exceptions like the human mind as some fluke of evolution? Or could it represent a more cosmic principle somehow woven into the fabric of reality itself? Chalmers believes the latter, that experience doesn't emerge from non-experience at all. Instead, qualities exist as latent potential throughout reality from the start. Otherwise, it comes perilously close to magical thinking that neurons somehow create the eventual miracle of experience from nothing. In other words, without the sensory inputs having some intrinsic subjective aspect already there in potential. This leads down the radical path of panpsychism, or the view that experience, mind or soul, is an irreducible aspect of nature. How broad and deep might consciousness pervade the universe, according to Chalmers? Electrons likely don't experience emotions, but perhaps they experience fundamental properties in minuscule quanta of experience everywhere across time and space as part of what constitutes them.
The wider implications of this theory shake up both physics and metaphysics. For starters, sentience can no longer be ignored as a byproduct of complexity, challenging materialism. Recognizing the subjective aspect of information also untethers minds from the traditional trappings of physical brains and bodies. We might speculate consciousness capable of inhabiting any complex system across the cosmological canvas, silicon chips, future quantum networks, even alien organisms on distant exoplanets. Searches to understand the mysteries of the universe may rightly look inward through the lens of quality as well as externally through the lens of quantities and surfaces. A proverbial theory of everything must factor conscious perceivers within its explanations to be complete. Subjectivity takes central stage, while matter gets demoted to the status of images shimmering across a deeper experiential screen. Quantum phenomena now expose nature as behaving far weirder on a nanoscale, almost certainly influencing consciousness. Contemporary mystical currents likewise appreciate the mind as a cosmic principle fundamental to existence, rather than some random fluke of evolution. Both fields are ripe to help integrate sentience, along with information physics, quantum entanglement, and new fields like integrated information that unite consciousness within natural contexts no longer devoid of inner life. Dense mysteries remain, but appreciating experience as elemental in the universe steers us down more promising roads of revelation than outdated views of consciousness as ghosts in the machine. By renewing this focus through worldviews like panpsychism and cosmopsychism, humans continue gaining insight into consciousness, reality, and our place within this strange, wonderful universe.